Hi everyone, so this is Amira and this is our first tutorial on our topic one, cell culture techniques. And this tutorial is about cell counting using a hemocytometer and the various calculations involved. So first off, why are we counting the cells? So for most of our experiments in our cell manipulation studies, we need to quantify the number of cells. It's a good way to assess the viability of our cells if we want to do a growth curve or we want to look at the doubling time of our cell line. It's important when we're subculturing our cells that we reseed the optimal amount of cells back into a new flask for the best growth. When we're doing experiments like transfections or stainings, it's important to know the cell numbers so we can add in the appropriate amount of reagent. When we're freezing down our cells, we need to put a certain amount of uh, cells within the cryoval so that way when we're thawing it out later, we know how many cells there should be. And then when we're seeding our cells for experiments like toxicity assays, we need to have a consistent number of cells for each replicate, because if you start off with a different number of cells, you're going to get a different result in the end, and your replicates won't be comparable. So using a consistent number of cells, it's going to help maintain the best growth of your cells, it standardizes your procedures, and it gives you results with better reproducibility, for example, between replicates. So using a hemocytometer, it's kind of a, a thick glass slide with a glass cover slip on top. And when you look at it under the microscope, you'll see that it's divided into nine major squares and the four corner squares are subdivided further into four by four grids. So here, 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 and here. So when we're using our hemocytometer, the most important thing is that you're performing your counts the same way each time. Whatever way is most comfortable and most efficient for yourself, you need to keep consistent within that. So the way the hemocytometer works is the amount of uh, space between the glass slide and the cover slip means that the volume of cells within the squares will be uh, will be 1 by 10 to the power of minus 4 mils. So then we need a conversion factor of 10 to the power of 4 when we are calculating how much we have in our actual full suspension. So this is what it will look like under the microscope with a cell solution and also using tripan blue to distinguish your dead cells. So your dead cells will have taken up the blue dye, so they'll be blue like here, 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 and they'll also be kind of irregular in shape, so you can see here, and they'll have sort of blebs because they're undergoing cell death. Then live cells will be kind of more regular, more rounded, and um, they kind of have an aura or like a sort of glow to them that the dead cells won't have. So just going through the process of actually using the hemocytometer, so you're going to add around 15 to 20 microliters of your cell suspension um, in between the hemocytometer and the cover glass, and it'll be kind of taken up by capillary action to cover the area. You want around 50 cells per corner, we'll say, um, because if you have too little cells, you're not getting an accurate count. Maybe your cell mixture isn't mixed correctly. And then if you have too many cells, it's going to be harder for you to count. It'll take ages for you to count, and there may be clumping um, and hard to differentiate cell per cell. So what you do is you count the number of cells in all the four corners, um, and then you divide by four to get the average or mean number of cells per corner per square. Then you take that number and multiply it by 10 to the power of 4 to give you what you have in your uh, total cell solution. Then when you're finished you just clean up the hemocytometer using ethanol and water and return it to storage. So again we're going to be counting uh, in the B, C, D and E the corners and then dividing that number uh, getting the average of those numbers and then we must remember to multiply by our dilution factor. So if we're using tripan blue um, and we've added 20 microliters of tripan and 20 microliters of cell solution, we have a dilution factor of 2. So we need to multiply by that as well. Then if we want to know not just how many cells we have per mil, but how many cells we have in total, uh, like how many cells essentially is in our tube uh, in the culture hood. So we multiply by the volume of cell suspension and that will give total cell number. So some important numbers are our number of viable cells. So again, that's the number of unstained cells um, multiplied by our dilution factor. So 
2 or 5, whatever it is in, uh, in your experiment, and then multiply by 10 to the power of 4, and that gives viable cells per mil. Then the number of dead cells is the same again, but just the blue, dyed blue cells um, to give your dead cells. Then your total cell count is viable cells plus dead cells, so all the cells basically that you've counted. Then your percentage viability is your viable cells divided by your total cell count, then multiply by 100 to get a percentage. And healthy cells should have around 90% um, viability because you'll always have a few dead cells just because of the kind of normal turnover and cell cycle. So like I said, when you're counting, you just want your process to be very uh, consistent. So what a lot of people do is they count, but they exclude the cells that are touching the top and the right side. But then again, some people use the other sides. So in this example, we'll just exclude the top and the right side. And then you also want to do a kind of um, consistent uh, route, we'll say, for counting. So this kind of zigzag route um, and do that every time is is an example of one way to do that. So for example, if we were doing this here, we would count one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 cells. And again, when you're in the cell culture room, you can use one of those um, clicker counter things. So an example for you to try at home, um, if you were required to seed 100 microliters of a 1 by 10 to the power of 4 cells per mil into a 96 cell plate, with a total volume of 10 mils. You have 20 microliters of cell suspension and 20 microliters of triprem blue added. So that's giving you a one-to-one -one, uh, dilution. And these are the counts. So you need to work out how much um, cell solution, cell suspension solution you need um, to seed out this plate for this experiment. And we'll discuss the results of this um, in the next discussion lecture. Thank you.